previously. Get this going a lot. What the? What the heck? What the? Come on, we got. You see anything, Logan? No. Okay. Darren, Steve, you guys got anything? Yep. We are all clear over here. Got a lot of gummy corpses. I think I might want to have a cigarette after this one. All right. You guys just keep in touch. If you have any problems, you let us know. We're going to start the video. Wait, Logan, get back. Get back, get back, get back. Welcome back to the channel, Den members. Sorry for the disarray that we're in here out at Lava Ranch. One, it's nasty weather, as it always seems to be. But as you could probably tell from that intro, we are working to reclaim Lava Ranch from the gummy bear threat that none of us really saw coming. Steve and Darren are actually here. You won't be seeing them. They're actually out in the fields right now, patrolling, trying to find the nests of these things. We are going through a major undertaking here. We have reclaimed the alley, the 100 yard alley, where we do our gun science, science videos. And in celebration of reclaiming the alley, we are going to be doing a gun science video today. There's been a lot of debate between people, at least in my circles, between AR-15 ammo, specifically the Remington 223 and the NATO 556. These rounds are generally considered interchangeable. They're the same, but they're not, but they are, but they aren't. Instead of trying to go through the couple key differences between the 223 and the 556 here, now, in the cold, we're going to go back to me back at the office where I am cozy and comfortable. Take it away, future me. Right, 223 verse 556. This is a 223 Remington. This is a NATO 556. For all intents and purposes, these two rounds look identical. For reference, these are both Winchester rounds and both have 55 grain projectiles loaded in them. The 223 and the 556 are virtually identical as far as external dimensions are concerned. Where you start to run into the small differences is when you start looking at the internals. Typically speaking, the military 556 rounds casing is ever so slightly thicker than the more civilian 223. This leads to, in general, a slightly higher pressure in the 556 round than in the 223. And when I say that there is a slight pressure difference between the two rounds, there is an average pressure in the 223 of 55,000 psi, whereas the NATO 556 round has an average pressure of 58,000. So there is a difference between the two rounds of about 3,000 psi. The other difference between the 556 and the 223 is not actually even a difference with the round. It's a difference in the construction of the chamber in the rifle itself. The free bore length of a rifle that is chambered in 556 is literally thousandths of an inch longer than the free bore length of a rifle chambered in 223. This is why it is highly recommended that you not shoot 556 five, rounds out of a rifle that is chambered in 223 despite the round actually being able to fit within the rifle. A rifle that is chambered for 223 is not taking into account the higher pressures that would come with a 5.56 five, round. That is about as far in depth as I would like to go today. Back to past me at the ranch. Thank you, future me. I can't wait to be me in a couple hours. So to test the differences, to see if there's any real world practical difference between the 223 and the 556 five, round, we're gonna do a ballistics test. We've got two blocks here. Actually, I've got another one in reserve. The first block is our homemade ballistics gel. I made up another batch of that. And then behind it, I have a ballistics dummy labs permagel block that I bought some time ago. Never really got around to using it. Logan, do you have any predictions? Well, I figure 5.56 five, will probably go a little bit further. You think so? It'll be about the same. 
Yeah, I, and honestly, I think it. I think it's about the same. It's just the 5.56 five, is a little hotter of a charge in the cartridge. I think they're gonna do the same thing. The real challenge today is going to be actually getting a solid hit on the gel blocks. So let's see what we can do. All right, first up is our 2.23. Got it! Oh, it went down. It blew out the table. We're gonna try that again and aim a little higher. All right, take two. That was much better. So this shows how much I know about ballistics with the 5.56 and the 2.23. Um, I guess really only the 223. That actually broke up in the first gel block. Oh, look. There's a piece of it right there. Oh, yeah. We're going to retire this gel block and I'm going to get out a fresh one for the 556. Dude, I can't believe that didn't go through to the second block. So I guess the 556 probably Sorry. won't either. Watch where you're Hold on, they're talking. I shouldn't have taken these off. You guys okay out there? No one said Darren had a flamethrower. Come on, man. Wait. Apparently, Darren has a flamethrower. Oh, yeah. They're burning real good. Yeah, okay. Okay. You guys like that? Fine. Right there, like I told you. Okay, bits of it. But yeah, primarily, it did go out the side. Huh. Wow, that really did angle off. Okay, so since neither round actually made it all the way through my homemade ballistics gel, and we'll do a compare and contrast here in a minute, I think we're actually gonna use the permagel here to see what a proper ballistics gel looks like and then compare, we can do a control here. So we'll see what proper ballistics gel looks like compared to my homemade stuff. And then we'll be able to see the difference between the 223 and the 556. Yeah, uh, what the hell was that, guys? <laughs> the landmines work, baby. Yeah, Who did. told you to put out landmines? You damn it, you give me all this equipment. I tell me I, to do what's <laughs> okay. necessary. All right, um, all right, all right. I'm just going to shoot this with a 556 and see what happens. Logan, I think we're going to have to build a new table. It really curved down there. It didn't go out, so it really did break up. You can't really see it too well, but it broke up when it started going down. Interesting. All right, I'm going to go grab the other two gel box, and we're going to do a comparison here. Let's see what situation. we got here. Whoa. Situation. Wait, wait. Time out. Time out. Slow down. down. What? Uh, small group. We got away. That They're heading your way. How did you let them get away? Don't even start with me, dude. All right, hey Logan, like we're going to be having company here, so we got to wrap this up real quick. So this was the 223 here, uh, just blew out. Like, and there's there's bits of it in here. Um, nice spiral. Next up is the 556 five, round, which. Unfortunately, it did go out the side, but I mean, the, the spiral pattern, the, the entrance wounds are the same. I mean, I think we can conclude here that the 223 and the 556, yes, they are technically different, but as far as real world application, they're gonna be about the same. If you, all you can get a hold of is 223 and not 556, you're gonna be fine. Obviously, we cannot say the same the other way around. If you have a rifle or a firearm that is chambered, and meant for 223 only. Do not shoot 556 out of it. Those higher chamber pressures can cause a catastrophic failure. Hit the like button on this video if you'd like to see what could happen if you did that. We'll see if we can get a hold of a gun that we really don't care about that's chambered in 223. That that would kind of be fun, right? Yeah. You, you don't like the idea of uh, detonating a perfectly good firearm, do you? <laughs> and then with the proper ballistics gel, Ah, this feels like a waste, but I think we're just going to use this as like a catch-all. 
Um, gosh, it's gotten foggy. There's dog fur in it. This is what happens when you impulsively buy something at 3.30 in the morning and then you have no real use for it. We're gonna try and get this cleaned up real quick and then see if we can intercept whatever's coming our way. If they're allowed to survive, they're just gonna continue to reproduce or whatever they do, multiply, divide, I don't know. Um, so we're gonna get this cleaned up real quick and crap. Uh, Logan, get back to the car, get back to the car, get your gun. Whoa, 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 there you are. I need to make a call. Come on, pick up, pick up. Hey man, uh, I, I know it's short notice, but we need more people out here. No, this isn't a joke. That's gonna do it for this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it despite the weather. If you did like it, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to get notifications on future content. As always, make it a great day.